This is Matt with Channel 5 Ratchet News and we're brought to you by Fly Fast Media. Make sure that you go follow. And today we want to talk about a prevalent issue that happened in our community. I am here with a neighbor, a neighbor who not only saw the crash on 22nd in Brookwood, but she feels a certain way. And I don't blame her because if anybody knows about the situation that happened yesterday, they were not aware if the child was in the vehicle or not when they decided to crash into that 14 year old boy to then total two neighbors cars. Um, that is a huge issue. Why? Because you're not only putting one life at risk, two lives at risk, but everybody in the community, not only who walks their kids home from school, but a lot of other situations where they could be out playing in the yard. And I just wanted to get this situation from the eyes of Miss Margaret. Miss Margaret, hello, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Matt. Thanks for she, talking to me today. Yes, this is an amazing and beautiful woman. No, she's not my sugar mama, y'all chill. Chill. I'm trying. He's working on it, though. <laughs> <I'm t> <laughs> so we don't want you to feel like this is something that we have to be completely serious, but it is a serious matter. What I mean is we're all one. This is community based. And we understand that a car was stolen on Lexington Street. We understand that some might see it as negligence from the parents, but nobody knows when you're putting a child in a vehicle that a young man is going to have such a heinous idea to steal your vehicle and it's not even carjacking i think that's the issue that we have here a carjacking is if they pull you out that car this is somebody leaving their car unattended and running and then somebody else hopping in the driver's seat um he saw an opportunity and took it that's exactly what it was he saw opportunity and took it so one thing that we do have to realize in harrisburg stop giving these young men opportunities we need to make sure that at all times, if our car is running, we're inside of it or we're doing something like, you know, adjusting our mirrors, uh, putting on our seat belts, actually inside of your vehicle. Cars shouldn't be running with nobody inside of it. It's dangerous. And particularly dangerous if you leave your child in it. And that is a very true statement. Now, what we did realize is that we always have to deal with the subject of these parents later after these news reports spin it as if they're victims. They then charge them as if they are not victims, but child endangering women and men. They're giving them judicial charges. And, and that's not only the issue. Uh, the issue is what about the parents of the kid? Why aren't they getting these charges? Because um, they're leaving a 14-year-old boy out here in these streets to steal cars. But we're not placing blame. But what we can do is we can assess the situation. What I didn't like is how you have a lot of outside jurisdictions that don't understand how this community works, don't understand a five-way intersection, and are going around 22nd and Brookwood and going four times in, in squares chasing this young man when there could be kids playing outside. Margaret, could you give me a, just a synopsis of how you see this area and how it's changed progressively over the years? Well, I've been here almost 18 years in August, and I've seen it change rapidly. Of course, everybody has multiple vehicles at their homes now, so there's lots of cars parked on the street. There's lots of families with multi, multiple family members, so there's always people coming and going. There's a school right around the corner. There's kids going to school every morning. Like you said, there's a five point intersection at Derry and Brookwood Street, and there's kids crossing that street daily to get to school. So um, I wanna say it's basically a community of families, people that go to work every day, they work hard, they take care of their properties, they go to work, they come home, they relax. So it's, it's relatively safe, but it's getting much more dangerous here. For a fact, and I even was able to speak with the man whose vehicle was hit, which he'll probably have to total, um, of a, total his Toyota that he worked hard for. He runs a business. His name is Mr. Kamanji. We had a great conversation about he was glad that his little sisters or any one of his family members weren't on that block playing when these when these cops decided to do such a reckless act. What I feel is reckless is going 60 in this neighborhood. We need to stop these pursuits. We know Harrisburg police tries not to do pursuits, pursuits, excuse me, but we do know that they call in these other jurisdictions, the Lower Paxtons, the East Pennsboroughs, a lot of other jurisdictions, the Stiltons, the Susquehannas, they are not from the city, so they operate differently. They go as fast as they can to ch chase these people. 
I don't feel that there should be a chase. A 14-year-old man doesn't even have enough money. I said, man, he's a child. He doesn't even have enough money to put enough gas back in the vehicle. I feel like he would have known by then that he was doing so much that was toxic that he would have just pulled over and parked if they would have gave him a chance. They make people nervous when they do the successive policing. Now, I don't have any issue with the cops. I don't have any issue with getting back up, but in this situation, it should have been, it should have been done way more meticulously. Um, I feel like they just didn't have regard for the people around. Uh, could you describe the situation that happened when you saw the scene? So it started, I was, it was just quiet Sunday afternoon. I didn't have TV on or anything. I was reading a book and I could hear sirens coming and it's not uncommon. We hear them quite a bit around here chasing people up and down Dairy Street because I'm only a block off Dairy. And the first thing I did was check out Channel 5 Ratchet News because that's where I go to get my local news because mm -hmm. I feel like it's unbiased and it's not spun by mainstream media. So I saw that there was a shooting out at Hall Manor and I thought maybe they're in pursuit of mm -hmm. whoever was involved in the shooting because I could hear them coming from that direction. Right. Then I hear them zoom up Brookwood and then, I mean, the, the chase ensued for a while, and then I heard the sickening crunch of the metal, and I was like, oh, damn, somebody got hit, right? Mm -hmm. Didn't know if it was a parked car, didn't know if it was a moving car, didn't know what, right? because accidents happen on this street a lot. So put my boots on, put my coat on, walked up the street. There's cops everywhere. I mean, must have been 40 police cars out there. And I walk up to the intersection. They hadn't taped it off yet. I had no idea what the situation was. And when I took the video, I prefaced it by saying, I don't know what dude did to have all these cops out here. I right. didn't know that a child was driving the car. I didn't know that a child was missing. Mm -hmm. Trust me when I say I know the fear that those parents must have felt knowing their child was missing. I've buried a child. I know right. what that feels like. But... I also know that I would not want the police putting anybody else in harm's way right. by pursuing them so violently through the entire city. It's quite a few miles from Lexington Street to Derry right. or Brookwood and 22nd Street. They chased dude all the way through the city. They were chasing a 14-year-old young man, a young man who can't have his license yet, a young man who can't even have his permit yet. I just feel that this wasn't approached correctly. That is more than... I would say 10 vehicles that are racing up and down the street. It escalated way too quickly. If they called in other jurisdictions, they could have cut dude off at the chase. There are other ways to pursue without a high speed chase. And, and it's residential been neighborhoods. known for years that high, high speed pursuits often end in tragedy. And that's a fact. That Not a only fact. to the person who, committed the crime, but police officers, mm -hmm. safety officers, pedestrians, it happens all the time. See, and I think what people don't understand about the channel is we care just as much about anybody in this situation. Officers, y'all could have hurt yourselves. One of your fellow officers could have been killed if that would have, if that would have been, if that would have went left. Um, remember, it's a 14 year old young man who's nervous and scared. Uh, he's a 14 year old boy. Who, who just had to drop off a three-year-old kid because he stole a car. He made a wrong decision. We get that. But this is where you guys making a right decision could stop from further tragedy happening. I'm trying to talk to us all as public so that we understand not only do we have to get our kids in check to tell them to not deal with these peer pressures. Um, don't not deal with them. Deal with them. But do not do not let them consume you. Don't think you have to steal cars to be cool. Don't think that you have to prove something to the next young man. You don't have to do this. This this, this is not Mario Kart. This is real life. That young man could definitely have changed his life in a matter of seconds. He's definitely going to have to live with this. Um, this could stay on his record. People, It doesn't matter if you try to expunge it. It doesn't matter if you try to hide it or conceal it. People will find this about you. And they will think that you are not right to be around kids. It can also further affect families because those families can now be seen as negligent because the situation happened with their kid in the car. They did not know that that kid was not in the car. That's one of the major issues. When I say kid, I'm talking about the three-year-old. They weren't aware. So at that time, they just thought it was a man still in the car and they were going hard. Yeah. My thing is if the police knew that there was a child missing and the child could have potentially been in the car, 
they were putting said child at extreme risk by chasing extreme. by chasing him through the city. I'm not anti-police. I'm definitely not anti-police, but I think it was handled wrong. Who was who was the commander on this? Were they coordinating with the other jurisdictions? Right. Their their policy on high sp- speed pursuits may be entirely different from the city. Is there a policy? I believe that Harrisburg City is not even supposed to ensue in, in high speed chases. It depends upon the case of the crime. Facts. It does. Probably because a child was involved, they were allowed to pursue. But at what point do you say, wait, this isn't smart? Someone right. else could get killed. Right. The 14-year-old could get killed. The 3-year-old right. could have gotten killed. Right. There's so, so many things that they could have thought so about many before, factors. They, before they took... Let's just hit this car going 60 some miles per hour into another car in a residential neighborhood where kids could be at. I don't feel that that was necessary. Because just today when we were up at the scene, a gentleman crossed the street with his child. With his child. Right around the same time that this happened yesterday. Correct. Could have happened to and he, anyone. And he spoke to us and he said, this is crazy. I'm, I'm glad that I, this one time I was at work. So I wouldn't be walking the same street with my daughter when they decided to be chasing somebody going 60 miles per hour in a square, like literally four times in the same neighborhood. Um, And if it had been a weekday, kids would have been coming home from school. Right. Either from the high up the street or around the corner. So we just want to know in Harrisburg City, we want to know in general in the greater Harrisburg area, are you guys taking the necessary measures to make sure that you are approaching these situations with the most... uh, with the most uh, precaution that you can. Um, we know that our officers have to protect and serve, but in this situation, you weren't protecting many people. You might have- A whole lot of people at risk. A lot of people at risk. that's what I said in my video. A lot of people at risk. And which, uh, which a couple news stations have reached out, but we wanted to get to the meat and cheese of this. The meat and cheese is, we need to know who is being held accountable. You got five different jurisdictions and none of them reside here. Somebody should have been passing word to tell them, hey, this is Harrisburg City. This is our area. Please proceed with caution even when trying to find this young man. They could have took, even even if you had to do the spikes because you knew it was a kid in the car, to slow the vehicle down is something you should have did. Not speed them up by there having. There should have been plenty of opportunities between Lexington Street and here to throw out some spike sticks. Especially if you have other jurisdictions coming in from outside the city. And I feel everybody should be approached the same when dealing with this situation. I don't feel that it's right that there's somebody right now facing felony child endangerment charges because somebody stole their vehicle while their child was inside and barely got any help from Harrisburg. There was no Amber Alert put out and there was a three hour gap in between when the child was found and when the... and Taken. And when the child was taken and when the child was found and the car was retrieved. So we have an issue in Harrisburg where in the media it's portrayed as though the person whose car was stolen was a victim. And then later on down the line when everybody sends in their bills, all these different jurisdictions that are coming in to help with this chase. Once they send in that bill, oh, it's become too much for everybody. You're going to have to get some type of charge for this. I don't feel that's how the judicial system so, should work. This seems like there's a lot of holes and gaps that need to be filled so that we feel that we actually are a community that's being protected and served. Um, Margaret, I just want to say thank you for coming here. Um, thank you for talking up with us. Thank you for opening up because I want to let you guys know we got to stop using that word so loosely because this is a Margaret. This isn't a Karen. This is right. This is a woman that cares, okay? She cares about the community around her, and she was the one that told me that she wanted to sit down and talk about this because it affects you seeing it. It affects you seeing how they talk to that 14-year-old young man after the mistake he's made without any lawyers present, without any parents present. He knew he did wrong. That's why he, the kid was not in the car when they were high-speed chasing. I will say this. I would have to give that young man accolades that he even used his process uh, his thinking process to know, look, I know I'm doing wrong, but let me not put this kid in this car while I do it. Sometimes we do have to say, look, young man, we know you did wrong, but thank you for doing what was right. And not having that child have to experience that whole trauma. The whole trauma was imagine if those cops would have still had that baby inside that car when they crashed it into another one on 22nd in Brookwood. Just imagine that, ladies and gentlemen. Imagine if your car was taken and a child stole your car with your child in it and nobody had regard for how fast they were going to stop that car that your child was in 
This is Matt with Channel 5 Ratchet News. And if you don't realize that every day we deal with these real situations and we are affected by it, our community is affected by it, our neighbors are affected by it, our friends are affected by it, I just want you to know how important it is for us all to come together and find rationale in these situations. We need to start holding people accountable. Harrisburg, you should have held those other jurisdictions accountable so that they ended this situation a little bit better. Not only do we have people who have to be without vehicles, but we have, uh, we have a situation. The situation is, are you going to treat everybody the same? Are we going to sympathize with these people that this happens to? And are we not going to later on after we spend in the media, give them or slap them with charges? I, I want us and to do stop better. Stop traumatizing our community. Stop traumatizing our community. Yes, because these young men are lost. What do we need to do in the community as well to, to, to help these young men that are lost? That is a big subject as well. Nobody should think it's cool to steal another person's car. We do have a lot of work to do in Harrisburg, and we're getting to it. We're bridging the gap. This is Matt with Channel 5 Ratchet News, and I hope you guys all have a great day. Thanks, Matt.